Hey guys, welcome to science today. We're going to be still exploring fossils and um, learning how to classify fossils in different ways um, and learning what scientists or paleontologists use and how they figure out different things about different dinosaurs. For instance, what type of food they eat or what they might have looked like. Um, so we're going to learn just by them looking at their fossils, looking at dinosaur fossils or different animal fossils, we're going to learn uh, about how they can classify those fossils today. Now we're going to use this program, to, uh, it's called Mystery Science, so we're going to watch this video together. I'm going to stop at different points and we're going to have some discussion questions that, that I'm just going to kind of walk through with you and explain. And at the very end, we're going to have a question in Google Classroom that you all are going to answer. Okay, so let's get started. Think of fossils, you think about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are exciting. Some of them were huge, like this brontosaurus, a member of the sauropod family of dinosaurs. Those are the dinosaurs with the big legs, the long necks, and the long tails. It's actually one of the sauropod dinosaurs that's the largest land animal ever to walk on Earth. That's this one, called Dreadnoughtus. Here's how big Dreadnoughtus would have been compared to an adult human being. And you know that some dinosaurs were absolutely terrifying, like this one, the most famous dinosaur of all, Tyrannosaurus rex. Each of its ferocious teeth were as big as your hand. This is a real fossil T-Rex tooth right here. Now, you might have heard that all of these great beasts died out a long time ago. We say that they went extinct. Scientists have reason for thinking that they all died out about 65 million years ago. One theory as to why they went extinct is that an asteroid, a rock from space, slammed into the Earth. Another theory is that a lot of volcanoes started erupting. Scientists aren't totally sure which theory is correct. What we do know is that the dinosaurs, these incredible animals, were all killed off, leaving behind little more than fossils of their bones. People are fascinated by the idea of dinosaurs. Because no one has ever seen them alive, as soon as the first dinosaur bones were discovered, we put them together and we try to imagine what would these animals have looked like on the outside ever since the 1800s we've been imagining what dinosaurs must have looked like here's one of the earliest attempts to imagine dinosaurs these are statues based on the fossil bones of a dinosaur called iguanodon now remember no one had ever seen a dinosaur on the outside but this is what we imagined they looked like in the early 1900s the first movie projectors were invented and one of the great things about movies is that you can create otherwise impossible things using special effects or animations. Do you want to guess what impossible thing one of the very first cartoons tried to bring to life? You guessed it, a dinosaur walking around. It was an animation from the year 1914, one of the very first cartoons ever, called Gertie the Dinosaur. How did we decide to make a dinosaur look in the first movies? Well, I thought you might, might like to see a short clip from Gertie. Here it is. Now, since the time of this dirty dinosaur cartoon, we've gotten a lot better at making animations and special effects for movies. By the 1990s, people were amazed at how lifelike the dinosaurs looked in the movie Jurassic Park. Now, Jurassic Park is probably a movie your parents remember vividly because it's also meant to be a scary movie. Now, did you notice how whenever we've imagined what dinosaurs look like, we make them look like giant lizards? Do you see here? We give them scales, just like a reptile. Why do we make them look like reptiles? Why do we give them scales? You might think, well, because that's how they looked, isn't it? But do you really know? I mean, what makes us think they had scales? Think about how we find dinosaurs. We find them as fossils. When we find a dinosaur fossil, it's not like there's any actual flesh. That's not left. They didn't die last week. They died 65 million years ago. Any flesh has long since rotted away. All we have of them are bones, right? So why assume they were scaly reptiles? 
How do we know they weren't more like this? For a beast that looked like King Kong. <laughs> Given that all we have of them are fossil bones, why do we think dinosaurs look like lizards? When scientists look at the bones of a dinosaur, why do you think they decided the outside of the dinosaur looks like a lizard rather than some kind of furry animal? All right, so let's talk about this real quick. Let's talk about why scientists decided that the outside of dinosaurs needed to look like lizards rather than <clears throat> furry animals or, or feathered animals. Well, well, the first thing that comes to my mind is when they are digging up these fossils, what do they have that's left? They don't have the skin. They don't have any feathers. Like, like Doug was saying, they don't have any of the outside parts. They just have the bones. So that's what they use as evidence. Okay, and so, so we're going to look at the answer here. So they notice some important similarities between the two different types of bones, dinosaur bones and today's lizard's bones. Okay, so they looked at the, those two. They tried to compare what they had in the past, dinosaurs, what they found, the fossils, and they try to compare it to something that they, we have now. And they look for the similarities, all right? Which, which family of animals does dinosaurs cl most closely resemble? And they found that they most closely resembled lizards. When you look at the bones of an animal, that's just showing the inside of it. Bones can't help figure out what an animal looks like on the outside. You know, whether they have fur or scales or feathers. Or can they? Could you use bones to actually tell you what an animal looks like on the outside? There are some scientists who collect and study bones. Bones of all kinds of animals. Cow bones, chicken bones, snake bones, lion bones. Now to you or me, these bones just look like bones. But to someone who loves bones, someone who studies them, they have noticed some very interesting clues. Take this one. To us, this is just some kind of animal skull. But to a bone expert, they look at this and say, Nope, this isn't just any animal skull. This is the skull of a scaly lizard. How can they tell what kind of animal it is just from its skull? Well, I'll let you in on one of their little secrets. It's these openings in the skull. That's something special there. See, the furry animals, mammals, animals like horses, squirrels, cats, and gorillas, their skulls have openings where you'd expect them. The eyes, the nose, the mouth. But the scaly animals, reptiles, like iguanas, geckos, and other lizards, they have openings in other places on their skull as well, places you wouldn't expect to find holes. Here's the eyes, here's the nose, those are places you'd expect to find holes. But see here, and here? Those are extra openings in the skull, openings that mammals don't have. So just by looking at a skull, you can tell whether something is a lizard or not. The very first dinosaur bones were discovered about 200 years ago, in the early 1800s. When people started finding dinosaur bones, they wanted to know, what kind of crazy animals are these? They're huge. They're unlike anything we've ever seen. But they're just bones. So can we get any idea what these animals might have looked like? So what do you think one of the first things scientists looked at? They paid close attention to the skulls. So when scientists find fossil bones, they look for whether the animal has just the expected number of openings in their skull, like furry mammals, or extra openings in the skull, like scaly reptiles. I'll show you some skulls, and you decide. Are they skulls more like lizards, or skulls more like mammals? Okay, so here's some pictures of, of some skulls, some fossils. And notice what, what the scientists, what the paleontologists use to identify those skulls, and to kind of compare them to what we have today. So what do you think? Does this dinosaur look, this dinosaur skull look more like a furry animal skull, or does it more look like a scaly lizard? Why do you think that? Well, if we use what we just learned, look at the amount of holes in this skull, right? It's got kind of a nose hole, or a nose might be, and then some eyes, but then it's got all these extra holes here, okay? So to me, it kind of looks like a lizard. What about this one? Look at how many holes this one has, too. Right, so this one has a lot of holes, and notice another thing paleontologists use, not just the skulls, but other parts of the skull. Look at the teeth here, too. This gives it clues about other things that we'll talk about in just a second. But 
notice the number of holes here as well. So this one looks more like a scaly, scaly lizard too. The word dinosaur itself comes from something you've just learned about. It's actually a combination of two words, both from the Greek language. Those words are dino, which means terrifying, and soar, which means lizard. So dinosaur means terrifying lizard. Dino, the terrifying part, is because the bones were clearly from gigantic creatures. And you know, some of them have some pretty ferocious looking teeth and claws. The sore part of dinosaur, now you can understand, is because when scientists looked at the bones, such as the skull, they thought, hey, this looks a lot like a lizard. But are you convinced dinosaurs were scaly lizards? I mean, the skulls are just one clue. That's one piece of evidence. How do you know dinosaurs weren't the one kind of animal that had skulls like a lizard, but instead maybe fur like a mammal? Mm. It'd be nice if there were more evidence than just the skulls. Well, there is. A few decades after the first fossil dinosaur bones were found, someone found these. Can you tell what these are? It turns out it's not true that fossils are always just bones. Sometimes we get fossils of other parts of animals besides just their skeletons, besides the bones. Any idea yet what these round lumps are? If it helps, these were found next to a dinosaur skeleton. Let me show you a different one of these round lumps. There's a little clue up here in the corner. You can kind of see it. It's like a tiny little baby inside that. Cracked open and close up. That's a tiny dinosaur skeleton inside. This round thing surrounding it is a fossil dinosaur eggshell. So you see, this is a fossil nest of dinosaur eggs. Isn't that amazing? Here we have proof from fossils that dinosaurs were a kind of animal that laid eggs. Now think about what kinds of animals today lay eggs. Do mammals lay eggs? Horses, dogs, cats, chimpanzees, the animals with fur. No, these animals don't lay eggs. But do reptiles lay eggs? Oh, you bet. See, here's a picture of a baby gecko hatching, baby lizard, baby crocodiles, baby snake. Here you can see some baby iguanas actually coming out of their eggs. So if there's any chance that dinosaurs might have been giant furry mammals, it's looking less likely now, isn't it? The fact that dinosaurs have skulls more like lizards and the fact that they laid eggs, which lizards do as well, makes it seem like they must have been reptiles. Still though, you can be unsure about how much they were really like reptiles. But then finally, nearly a hundred years after the first dinosaur fossils were discovered, some scientists discovered this while digging up some dinosaur bones. What part of the dinosaur's body do you think this might have been? Ooh, Look closely. Good question. Let's check it out. So, what do you guys think? What part of the dinosaur's body do you think this might have been? Well, to me, I see it looks kind of like there's different little shapes in here. And it looks not very smooth. To me, this looks like skin, right? Dinosaur skin. And more specifically, scales, right? So it's the skin of the dinosaur, and those are scales. And here's proof that dinosaur had scales, okay? Like reptiles or lizards, okay? So, based on what you just learned, we're going to summarize why dinosaurs think, or I'm sorry, not dinosaurs. We're going to summarize why scientists think dinosaurs look like lizards. I want you to keep this question in the back of your mind, okay? What we've just learned, I want you, we're gonna, you're gonna put this in your own words. It's gonna be part of your Google Classroom uh, exit slip. Put this in your own words of why scientists think dinosaurs look like lizards, okay? It's gonna be one more short video and then we're gonna be done. So all of these clues, the bones, the eggs, the skin, these are the reasons why we think dinosaurs look like reptiles on the outside even though we don't have any photos or videos of what dinosaurs looked like when they were alive. This is why in movies and paintings and sculptures, artists always depict dinosaurs as looking like giant lizards. It's exciting we're able to figure out what they look like. 
But there's still so much more that would be great to know about dinosaurs. Like, how do we know what they ate? In all these pictures or movies, we seem to like to show Tyrannosaurus rex attacking things. Or we show sauropods munching on plants. Unfortunately, we can't watch them eat because, well, they've all been dead for millions of years. We can't look in their stomachs because the stomachs rotted away, never having turned into fossils. So is there a way we can tell what dinosaurs ate? Yes, there is. It's the key. Just like we can compare the dinosaur skulls with the skulls of animals today, so we can also compare dinosaur teeth with the teeth of animals alive today. Animals that eat mostly meat, called carnivores, have sharp pointed teeth which help them grab and hold their prey, the animals that they eat. Here's a lion skull, another great example of a carnivore. You can see it's not just their front teeth that are sharp, their back teeth called the molars, are sharp and pointed as well. That's great for cutting and tearing meat off the bone. But with all these sharp teeth, they don't really have any easy way to chew and grind up their food. So carnivores usually bite and tear and then just gulp down their food without chewing too much. They have terrible table manners. <laughs> Animals that eat mostly plants, called herbivores, have teeth that look like this. The front teeth are big and flat. That's good for cutting leaves or grass. And then their back teeth are big and pretty flat as well, which is useful for grinding up the plants as they chew from side to side. What about animals that eat both plants and meat? Well, they're called omnivores. And just like you might expect, they have some teeth that are like those of plant eaters and some teeth that are like those of meat eaters. Their front teeth are large and flat for chopping through plants. And then behind those, they have these sharp teeth called canines, which are pointy for catching prey. So even though dinosaurs are long since dead, we could look at their teeth and figure out what kinds of food they eat. Practice a little bit here. See if you can figure out whether each of these animals we're going to show you are meat eaters, plant eaters, or omnivores, just by looking at its teeth. Okay, so that was it for the end of it. But what I want you to do, we're going to go back just to this question here, just to review it. You're going to answer this question in Google Classroom. Summarize why scientists think dinosaurs look like lizards back in the day, okay? So that's going to be in Google Classroom. Go ahead and open that up in Google Classroom and uh, get that question answered for today. I hope you all have a great rest of the day. We'll see you a little bit later.